Joseph was a dreamer, a faith in God believer. He didn't always know what God was doing, but he trusted him. Joseph got a new coat, a coat of many colors, a loving gift from dad. But guess who God met? Joseph's brothers. They threw him in a dark pit, told that there was an accident, then waited for a right time sold him as a slave way down in Egypt. But Joseph was a dreamer, a faith in God believer. He didn't always know what God was doing, but he trusted him. Seems things got much better. When he was bought by old man Potiphar, he did his job so well that everyone could tell he was a leader. But one lie by a woman, and Joseph ended up in prison, interpreted some dreams, and so impressed the king, he ruled the kingdom. Because Joseph was a dreamer, a faith in God believer. He didn't always know what God was doing, but he trusted him. When Joseph had the chance to see his brothers again, he knew that God had placed him in this place so he could save them. All because Joseph was a dreamer. A faith in God believer. He didn't always know what God was doing, but he trusted him. Joseph was a dreamer. A faith in God believer. He didn't always know what God was doing. But he trusted him. He didn't always know what God was doing, but he trusted him. Last week we were talking about Jacob. Now we're going to continue about with Jacob's family. This week's story is going to be about his favorite son. Jacob is now married to Leah and Rachel. Between them, they've got 12 sons and one daughter. And out of the 12 sons, Jacob found Joseph extra special because Joseph seemed to be an obedient child, a child that listens, that was responsible, he listened to his parents and he was very loving. Jacob treated Joseph, her older son, as though he was the firstborn. And this made the other older brothers very, very angry. Jacob gave Joseph a special coat with long sleeves that only the privileged older son usually had. Because Jacob loved Joseph so much, the other sons hated him. They would go off to look after Jacob's sheep with much muttering and grumbling. Jacob sent Joseph to help one day, but then they look after the sheep. 
And it was Joseph was shocked at some of the things that they were doing. To make it worse, he went home and, took, and told his father about what they were doing. This made the brothers hate him even more. So much so that they wouldn't even talk to him. When Joseph tried to speak to them, they paid no attention and went on laughing and joking amongst themselves. And on top of that, being the favourite son, he was a dreamer, Joseph. Our Joseph was a dreamer. And he had dreams quite a lot. This particular day, he woke up and he had been dreaming and said to his brothers and parents, let me tell you my dream, let me tell you my dream. And they told him, go away. He said, no, just listen. He said, you know what? I had a dream and there were 12 shifts of wheat and they were all standing straight and then one my shift of wheat was in the middle and the other 11 shifts of wheat bowed down to my shift of wheat that upset his brothers do you now mean you're gonna rule over us and we shall indeed bow to you get away from here go out of here and that made them even more angry. Not long after, Joseph had another strange dream. This time he told his father about it. I dreamed that the sun and the moon and eleven stars were all bowing down to me and said, Why mighty Joseph thinks we all should all have to treat him as the boss, they said to themselves. Even Jacob was a little upset. He thought that the sun and moon in the dream could be himself and his wife. Do you really think that you're more important than your parents? He asked Joseph. But although he scolded Joseph, Jacob went on thinking about the dream. Could it be God's way of telling him that he had chosen Joseph for something very special? As Sam went on one day, the father Jacob sent the 11 brothers to go and look after the sheep in the faraway land and because it was quite far away they were there for a few days after a few days the father thought mm, these boys have been there for a long time I better do something to help them you know what Joseph come 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 take this bread and this water this supplies take it to your brothers so and just to make sure they are all right and go and give them these supplies and Joseph said yes right of course I will. Joseph set off in the direction that his brothers had taken asking for news of them as he went. At last he trapped them down. When he was still in the distance the brothers caught sight of him. They recognised him right away by the coat that Jacob had given him. Look said one of them here comes the dreamer. We've got him on his own now, said another. Why don't we kill him while we have the chance? Then we'll see what becomes of his wonderful dreams. Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, tried to stop them. We ought not to kill him, he said. Let's throw him down this dried up old well. That should teach him a lesson. Joseph was close now, and so was, there was no more time to talk and plan. He came towards them eagerly, not suspecting what they were going to do. Two of the biggest brothers grabbed him, while another ripped off his flying coat, then they threw him down the well. There would be no climbing up because the sides were quite slippery and stuff. A little breathless but well satisfied, the brothers sat down and enjoyed their meal. They paid no attention to Joseph's desperate cries for help. While the brothers were eating their meal, they saw a long line of camels coming along. Soon they could see it was a caravan of traders, their camels loaded with spices. They would be going to Egypt to sell their goods. Why not sell Joseph to the traders, their brothers said. It's a much better plan than killing him, and we might earn ourselves some money. They all agreed, except for Ruby, who was not with them at the time. Everything began to happen quickly. While some of the brothers bargained with the traders, other, others hurled jo Paul Joseph out of the pit. 
He looked very healthy and strong despite being very muddy. You should fetch a good price in the slave market. I'll give you 20 pieces of silver for him, the trader offered. The drill was agreed and Joseph was led away. Very soon Reuben came back. He'd been planning to rescue Joseph secretly and smuggle him home to Jacob. When he found the well empty, he was horrified. Had the other brothers killed Joseph already? But soon they explained to Reuben what they had done. Next they must decide what to tell their father. They picked up Joseph's fine coat, which they ripped off him, and smeared it with the goat's blood. As soon as they reached home, they took the spoiled coat to Jacob. We found this, they said. Does it belong to your son? When Jacob saw the blood matted coat, he gave a big cry. A wild animal must have killed him, he exclaimed. My own dear son Joseph is dead. I shall never see him again. All my life I will mourn him. All this while, Joseph, securely roped, was being pushed and dragged along the road to Egypt. But God was still with him. Now, children, let me ask you. Do you think it was right for Jacob to show favoritism to one particular child? Do you think it was right for the brothers to be mean to Joseph just because the father gave him extra attention? Do you think it was right for them to sell him into slavery? Do you think Joseph should take a revenge? All these are questions I'm asking myself, and I'm sure you two will be asking yourself. But most importantly, you need to think hard. Do we treat somebody different and badly just because we think they've got something we should have had? Think about it. And have a lovely, lovely week. Remember, it's not nice to be unkind and horrible just because somebody has something we don't have or somebody's different from us. We should try our best to love each other. Did you enjoy hearing about Joseph this week? Now we're going to have a go at trying to make his coat of many colours. I don't know if you've ever done tie dyeing before, but we're going to give it a try. Right, what you need is some white cloth. It's got to be cotton. Something to put it over. You can use a cup. I'm using an old jar. And some isopropyl alcohol, which is known as rubbing alcohol, or surgical spirit would do which you can buy from the chemist and some permanent markers now you can use all sorts of permanent markers but I think sharpies are actually the best and what you have to do is put your cloth over the bottle and secure it with a rubber band nice and tight then you take your pens and in the middle you make little dots or a pattern with the sharpies. Use all sorts of colours. Then you have to drip on some of the alcohol onto the top. Now I'm going to use a little dropper, a medical dropper. You can also use a syringe or if you're really stuck, a paintbrush, a small paintbrush that you can dip in and just squeeze the drops onto the top. Now these are really inflammable so 
wherever you get them from and read the safety instructions. This should be done with an adult, by the way. So I'm going to drip just a few drops of the alcohol onto the top. There we have the many colours. You just need that to leave that to dry off. If you wanted to do a t-shirt, you could do it, and you just have to harden it off. Look online and you'll find out how to harden it off and make it stick to the t-shirt. But that's that's what it looks like. And here are some that I've actually got to dry off that I've done earlier. Okay, hope you liked that. Hope you enjoyed the story of Joseph and there's a little bit of multicoloured to let you remember it. Bye! Hello Sonic Club! Hi children. To be unkind to your brothers, sisters, or anyone is not a good thing. You have to show them love and kindness, especially the young ones. Joseph's brothers were unkind to him and they wanted to hurt God sees everything and knows our every thought and plans. And he will keep his obedient children safe. He was there protecting Joseph all the time. And he's right here protecting you and I as well. Let us pray. Dear God, we ask that you will continue to watch over us and protect us. Father, teach us how to be kind and loving to each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Goodbye. And enjoy your holiday.